Hi everybody, Ian Bremer here around your world in 180 seconds. I have your questions as always lined up on my phone and we're ready to go. Number one, what issues will dominate the Trump-Harris debate? Well, I mean, clearly the economy, migration, abortion, I mean, these are the issues that are on top of everybody's agenda. I care the most about global issues, foreign policy issues, things like climate change, artificial intelligence governance, and say the Middle East, China, um, and Russia. But uh, I, I suspect that that gets a small amount of time and also is a very little impact um, to voters that have still undecided. Having said all of that, I don't think this is mostly about issues. Uh, I think this is mostly about how does Harris perform against Trump and vice versa. Um, it, and, and keep in mind that given just how filtered people's information sources are, um, if one of them, them wins by a little bit, um, then both sides are going to come away saying we destroyed the other and so will all of their supporters. So, I mean, there has to be a big mistake or a big win for anyone to break through in what's an extremely tight race here. And that's what everyone's looking for, especially because Harris hasn't been tested like this before. And Trump's last few public appearances uh, have been uh, pretty all over the map uh, and showing his age. So I think people looking for first major test of Harris of this sort um, and is Trump capable of still delivering, um, you know, big time entertainment in this sort of a format. So that's where we are. Uh, everyone will be tuned in uh, tonight. I think a lot more than 50 million people in the United States uh, are going to be watching. This should be a highly, highly visible um, and important uh, only two months before the election action. Okay, as, as Mundo uh, Gonzalez uh, seeks asylum in Spain, what lies ahead for Venezuela and Maduro's opposition? Uh, well, the fact that the United States uh, has uh, impounded one of Maduro's planes shows just how much that policy uh, had failed, uh, an effort to try to use carrots um, to uh, get the Venezuelan government to be willing to hold a free and fair election. That was never going to happen, not from the Americans, not from the Colombians, not from the Brazilians, not from the Mexicans. There was no one out there that was going to make a difference, and sadly not Venezuela's opposition either. Uh, what this means is the military still supporting the Venezuelan president, massively corrupt, completely stolen, illegitimate election, and he's not going anywhere. That's where we are. And the uh, if, if uh, Gonzalez hadn't fled the country, he was going to get arrested. Venezuelan military and president very happy for him to flee the country. Uh, they gave him more than enough time and indication saying, OK, we're coming for you. We're coming for you. OK, now we have an arrest warrant. If you don't leave, you're going to jail. He left. Um, and uh, everyone, I guess, uh, is comfortable with that outcome, but a horrible place for the Venezuelan people, millions of whom will be streaming, millions more, um, mostly uh, to uh, to the United States, uh, to Colombia, to other countries. How was Mario Draghi's report on EU competitiveness received? Received very well uh, because uh, the Europeans are not spending on competitiveness and industrial policy the way the Americans are, the way the Chinese are. And that means that they are being left behind in terms of technology. They're also not spending enough on security, which means they're still super, super dependent on the United States. Um, and Draghi is calling for the Europeans to do a lot more, but they don't have the internal leadership to make that happen. And they don't have the fiscal space, nor do they have um, the coordination uh, capable, even in a strong European Union. So very welcome. Not going to get implemented. That's where we are. Love Draghi. Uh, but uh, he ain't running the EU. Uh, that's it for me, and I'll talk to you all real soon.